welcome to Wish You Were Here today. Well, as ever, we've got lots of great ideas to give you inspiration for your next holiday. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at what one viewer will have won by the end of the programme. You never know, it could be you. Well, if that's inspired you to enter, all you have to do is answer this question. Well, it might be worth checking the expiry date on your passport because you could be going off on holiday. We'll let you know who's won at the end of the show. Well, you've still got just enough time to enter our competition. So here's a quick reminder of today's fantastic prize and the question you have to answer in order to win it. So go on, reach for that phone and dial. As ever, we'll let you know in about 15 minutes whether you'll wish you were here today's lucky winner. And we've got all of this still to come on the show. Welcome back to Wish You Were Here Today from Dubai. Well, I had a very early start this morning because I'm off on an excursion. And right now, we are heading due south out of the city, right into the desert. Dubai is a city literally built in the desert. And when you hit the outskirts, gleaming skyscrapers are replaced by mile upon mile upon mile of sand. A trip out of the dunes is a must for all visitors. So, why do you have to let the air out of the tyres? We have to deflate till half the pressure till 16 psi to have more grip on the sand. Tyre will be wider. We'll have the car will not be will not stack easily and it will not be very bumpy. So it will be more comfortable drive. Okay, so more comfortable and safer. Yeah, of course. Not going to tip over. No, no, never, never happen. Yeah. Now, before we get going. Yeah. Driving through the desert can't be that good for the environment. Do you have set rules that you have to yeah, stick to? Yeah, of course. To? In this area, it's the Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve, and we have certain rules we have to follow it without damaging the environment. All this area, it's fenced. It's 225 kilometers square, and it's a protected area, and we have lots of uh, animals like uh, oryxes and gazelles. Right, so very important to stick to the roads. Yeah, of course, sure. Yeah. I'm quite excited. Let's go. First up, dune bashing. Whoa! How can you tell what's on the other side? How do you, I mean, it looks like a knife edge. Ah, uh, I don't know what's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> That's not reassuring. Stop, small jump. Whoa! So how big is this desert? The desert is very big. If you drive south from here, you will reach Saudi Arabia, which is around seven, seven hours by car. So is this how the desert looks all the way to Saudi? Yeah, mostly it's the same, but uh, in some places are different colours and higher dunes. Higher dunes? Yeah, of course. We'll pass. I'll take you now to one of the, of the bigger dunes and the high ones. Excellent. Amazingly, the desert manages to support a host of animals and people. For thousands of years, this arid environment has been home to the Bedouins surviving alongside the gazelle, the Arabian oryx, and of course, the camels. And the reason we've come here to this high dune is so I can slide down it on one of these. Or more realistically, on my backside. Right, here goes. Whoa. That's what I like, a chairlift that comes to me. Well, I'll have more from Dubai for you tomorrow. Now, a holiday in one of Europe's smartest cities normally means a price tag to match. But we sent Mary Nightingale to Venice, a notoriously expensive city, to see if she could make the most of it on a budget. The two-hour flight from London is followed by a 30-minute transfer, usually the boring bit of a journey, but not in this case. You literally come out of the airport and into a waiting water taxi. The water 
taxi takes you from Marco Polo Airport right into the heart of the city. This is my first trip to Venice and I'm so excited. Just look at that view and it's extraordinary to think it's hardly changed in hundreds of years. Now, Venice has a reputation for being extremely expensive. I want to see if you can enjoy this extraordinary city on a moderate budget. So I'm not staying in a pricey hotel. My home is this apartment, which costs for a week, only a little more than a weekend in a three-star hotel. Just right for getting a local feel for the place. But that doesn't mean missing out on the glories of Venice. Napoleon calls St Mark's Square the finest drawing room in Europe. Back then it was the centre of Venetian social life and it still is. Apparently around 12 million people visit Venice every year. I think most of them are here today. But uh, here's a tip if you wait until after 5.30 when the coach parties have gone, it's much better. See what I mean? And another tip, drinks cost an extra two or three pounds if you want to sit outside and enjoy the music in St Mark's Square. It's much cheaper inside, but then it's not so much fun. Another good way to save money is to avoid the official tours and uh, buy a really good guidebook instead. It's really difficult to get too lost in Venice. And in fact, I think it's only once you have the courage to stray out of those main tourist areas that you actually find the nicest places. And if you do get lost, the yellow signs will put you right back on course again. And here's another tourist trap. A trip on a private gondola will cost you at least £75 an hour. They're actually really only here for the visitors. Venetians only use them for special occasions like weddings and so on. And apart from anything else, just look at those queues. The best way to travel is by Vaporetto or water bus. And it's by far the cheapest way to see the great palaces that line the Grand Canal. Route number one travels the entire length. Early morning at the busy Rialto fish market, I'm here to buy something for dinner. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Uh, quanto costa? 16.000 lire al kilo. Uno. Per favore. My Italian phrasebook is coming handy. In true Venetian style, I've acquired a shopping trolley. They're just right for negotiating the bridges, narrow alleys and market crowds. I've got another tip for you. This time, how to turn water into wine. You bring an empty bottle and they fill it straight from the barrel at these little wine shops. And it's very cheap. Now, it has to be drunk within a day or two, but uh, that's no problem. See, so, yeah, isn't that fantastic? Now, of course, Venice is famous for its food. But here's something not many tourists find. The little backstreet bars sell small snacks called a chiquetta. There's a big selection, and you could choose something like that for about three pounds. And you could wash it down with a local drink called a spritz, which is uh, white wine, campari, and lemonade, and costs about one pound fifty. Now, at the end of the Vaporetto routes are small islands like Burano. The houses, they say, are multicolored so that fishermen could identify their homes while out on the lagoon. Today, though, lace making is the main activity, a tradition passed down through generations. You know, you could go mad in here and really blow your budget. This, for example, is about £2,000, but if you fancy a little bit of Venetian lace and you don't want to break the bank, how about that for a pound? Back home in my apartment, it's time to cook that fish. Now, the kitchen may not be the prettiest or the most modern for that matter, but it's fairly well equipped and it's certainly got everything you need to make a basic meal. But if you can't be bothered to cook for yourself, you can eat out very reasonably. Avoid the menu touristica and go where the Venetians eat, to typical little trattorias like this. And this is a dish I've been recommended. It's a local speciality, a sort of spicy seafood spaghetti called buzara. Now watch me get tomato down my chin. <laughs> mm -mm. And it's only five pounds, not bad. I know what you're thinking, she's gone and blown the budget. But actually, no, this is a traghetto or public ferry. You don't get the plushy seats and it's only about a two minute ride. But get this, instead of 75 pounds, it's only about 30p. 
Now, if you want to look around the city,